Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Juan Londoño and wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today is a Photo Philosophy Friday topic, which means we don't do uh, something very technical. We kind of go into words of some type, uh, maybe look at a quote. And today we are doing just that. We're looking at a quote by Andy Warhol. The quote states, the best thing about a picture is that it never changes, even when the people in it do. So obviously Andy Warhol was referring to people, but photography covers many, many other broad topics. And this really kind of applies to everything, uh, including landscapes and architecture. We'll get into that in a minute, but let's move on with the people. So as far as people are concerned, right, this is definitely a true statement. And we can look at two very important categories here. One is memories, right? When we go, say, with our family to the beach or to a picnic or whatever, right, to another country, we take a bunch of photographs, we come back, and we look at those photographs, and it reminds us of the great time that we had, right? And in some cases, a miserable time that we had, but that's part of the memories that we formed and that we keep, right? Um, not everything in life is, 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 is happy and positive, right? Sometimes there's a little bit of negative. We may be remembering something, some really cool weekend when, where something bad happened, right? Uh, but we look at those pictures and we definitely remember. We remember the trip. We remember being there with the people that we visited. We remember even maybe some people we met along the way that weren't photographed, right? But the whole, just looking at the pictures reminds, of, reminds us of all that stuff. So for the memories, right? That's an important piece, right? Being able to take pictures and capture that. But there's also the, what I called, what did I call it here? Documentation, right? So I would say if you're trying to work on something, you, you know, if you have like a day job and you're trying to start something up at, you know, on the side that you want to boom, assume that you're going to make it big, right? And if you're going to make it big, you want to document your life. You want to document your progress and you even want to document yourself. So how many times have you seen a famous person where they say, look at the transition through life, right? A uh, famous actor or actress at the age of three, at the age of 10, at the age of 15, at the age of 20, at the age of 30, and then you see them progress. And it's so cool to see that. So both of those are very important for documenting history in a way, and also for just capturing memories. So with that in mind, I want to deviate here to the side for a minute and and bring up a, a, a comment that people make, right? A statement that people make uh, once in a while when they're going on a trip. And they'll say something like, I'm not gonna take a camera or I'm not gonna take any pictures, I'm not gonna take any photographs. I just wanna enjoy this trip, I wanna live it, and I wanna remember it that way, right? Is that statement still valid today? And I'm gonna argue, I mean, anything's valid if you decide that it is, right? I can't argue with you, but to me, that statement isn't really a valid statement anymore for this reason. When that statement came about, it was back in the days of cameras, and I just put my big camera away, uh, which was sitting here. Um, and specifically speaking, film. And it meant you had to carry film. It meant you had to set everything manually. It meant if you wanted to do a little bit of automatic, you had to have a camera that had some automatic features, or you had to carry a light meter, whatever. It meant work to some degree. And I could see people saying, you know what, screw it. If they weren't really avid photographers, I could see them saying to themselves or to their family, I'm not going to capture anything on this trip. I just want to relax and enjoy it. Yeah, back then, probably true. But today we have these. And this thing's always in everybody's hand. And if not, it's in a pocket nearby. And it takes absolutely no time. I don't even have to log into mine there's a little camera that I can just slide and it takes me right to the camera without opening the phone, right? So if I'm walking and I see an amazing landscape, this comes out of my pocket, I slide this button and the camera's ready. I take a picture, I take two pictures and when I get out of this, it, it's locked again, right? It's that simple. So can we use that as an excuse? I think today that's a cheap excuse. That doesn't even make sense. Now, if you're lugging around a professional camera, Heck, I would even say, even though I'm completely against automatic mode, if you're really that lazy, put the thing on automatic mode and just shoot that way, right? Or aperture priority if you're a really good photographer. 
you know, speed, you know, shutter speed priority. And then now Canon and some of the companies are coming out with like a flexible mode where, you know, you pick a few things within certain parameters and then you can set the ISO to automatic and it won't let the other parameters go above or below certain ranges. And then it just adjusts, adjust, adjusts your ISO. Uh, it only adjusts your ISO uh, in the meantime, right? Uh, as long as you're within those other parameters. So really cool features that cameras have today. You don't really have to be worried that you're going to be working. You don't have to lug film around. If it's a small camera like the one that's recording this video, the Canon M6 Mark II, the Canon M50, many of the small Sonys, um, you can, and many of the small Fuji films, right? They're all crop sensors for the most part, except for these big, uh, you know, uh, large format cameras that Fuji film makes. If you have any of those small cameras, heck, if you have cargo pants like I usually carry on me, uh, those cameras fit in your pocket if you have like a little pancake lens and you can keep another lens in the other pocket. So very easy to lug around. It sounds to me like a cheap excuse. I bought it in here because Obviously, if you feel that way, right, if you're going on a trip and you say, I'm not taking any pictures, I'm just going to enjoy it, then this whole thing about, you know, pictures don't change what people do is kind of a moot point, right? Um, it doesn't really matter because you don't have a camera. Um, but if you're one of those people like myself, which always wants to capture things, um, my memory can only go so far. I'll be honest with you. If I take a trip today, um, 20 years from now, I may remember a quarter of it, right? And I don't want to leave that up to chance. I want to capture those moments. I do set things up in my computer in folders that I can go back and look at. I'm starting to print things, right? Which is fantastic. That way I can print and keep things in albums. Um, so if you're like that, you definitely want to capture these things. And all of this applies, right? The, the memories and the documentation, the archival piece. So now I want to go back to landscapes because we started by talking about them. And I said we'd push it out to a little later. Landscapes are interesting. There is money in, in history. There's money to be made in history or with history. And what I mean by that is I've always thought about it and I never did it. And then, you know, you walk into like a McDonald's or a Wendy's and there's a big black and white picture of what was there where that restaurant is like 50 years ago. And it's a black and white with trees and a little barn, right? And a horse or something. And you look at that and you go, whoa, that is really cool. Whoever captured that picture had, had foresight, you know? I mean, they captured it thinking this is going to be different one day and somebody can take advantage of that. And here we are looking at the picture and then you look outside and there's another fast food place and there's a gas station and all kinds of things around there. No little barn anymore, no trees, <laughs> trees are further back. Um, so I've thought about doing this and I, you know, it's probably just lazy, right? Maybe I don't want it bad enough. Maybe I'm just working on too many other things. But, you know, by me, by where I live in, in Georgia, um, things are developing further and further outside of the city, like in most, you know, rural areas. And the further you get from the city, of course, the more trees you see and the less buildings, right? But they're running out of space. So every year it gets further and further from the city. And there's another exit where you see a gas station that didn't exist there before or some fast food. And I've been meaning to just take my camera one day, my tripod, doing this like at six in the morning when the sun's coming up, there are a few cars and getting like the northwest corner, the northeast corner, the southwest corner, the southeast corner of one of the intersections that have nothing, right? Uh, one of the exits that have nothing. And then starting to do that around here and then spreading out a little further and doing it in other areas and checking what's happening 20 years from now, maybe going back to those establishments and saying, Look at this photograph. This is exactly where you're sitting now. Would you be interested in buying this, right? And you can make money off of that. So keep that in mind. Um, but regardless of that, the topic is, you know, the fact that, you know, the, the subjects change that are in the photographs, but the photographs themselves don't, right? So whatever you're capturing, the photograph isn't gonna change, but the whole place around is changing and that's fantastic for archival definitely right documentation and then historically you can make some money off of that because people want to capture that history i want to end this with the last topic which is movies right that's one of the reasons that movies to me are so appealing i don't know about you let me know if, in the comments if, if you agree um you know i remember being like eight years old and looking at raquel welch on 10,000 bc uh, i can't remember i think that's the name of the movie 
And I knew at that age that I would be watching that movie again later on in life because I fell in love at the age of eight or nine, however old I was. And I think I did watch it later in life, right? So the fact that you can do that, that you remember seeing something really cool in a movie and you can, you know, pop it in and watch it again, that's definitely, uh, you know, memory, history, a little bit of everything, right? Um, so for that reason, movies tend to captivate me. And I know many people get captivated for that reason. Along the same lines is the nostalgia of cars and clothing, right? People that grew up around the era of hot rods, they'll watch a couple of movies that have hot rods just so they can, just so they can see them on the streets and hear them, right? And see the whole culture around hot rods. Uh, people that are into fashion will watch old movies to see how people dress. As a matter of fact, designers will watch movies to see how people dress so that they can put some of those cues into modern clothing and if they work on movie sets, so I point that way because my TV is in that direction. Uh, if they work on movie sets so that they can recreate rec recreate the movie, the, uh, the attire for the movie, right? They're making a movie that's based out of the 30s. Then you want to put a couple of movies. I think it was what, Al Capone or something like that, right? I don't know the exact date he was around. But the Depression era, right? The Great Depression. And you see how people were dressed so you can recreate that for the movies. So... All of that is really cool. And what is a movie? A movie is a bunch of still photographs back to back, right? Moving images. So that's basically it, right? It was a quick video just to talk about this wonderful quote. Uh, we all know it. We think about it all the time. But in the back of our minds, right? I don't think I've ever said it out loud. The fact that people change, but, you know, the, the way they were captured never changes, right? You, you, no matter how, when you look at that picture, they are what they are, right? Um, and I know that must be difficult for actors and actresses because imagine, you know, being in your 70s or 80s and watching a movie of, you know, your first movie when you were like 20 years old and, you know, your skin was nice and tight and, you know, everything was in place and, right? And then you, and then you look at it later on. And it just kind of reminds you that, you know, we're all aging, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. We're all aging. That's part of life. But, but it kind of hits home. If you're an actor or actress, actress, because they they really make a lot of effort to always look good, always look their best. And you know, you know, people give them a hard time for plastic surgery and because they're too vain. You know what? This is how they make their living, right? That's important for them, and they need to take care of themselves. So don't give them a hard time. It's what they have to do, right? But um, but I'm sure it hits home, right? So anyway. I leave you with this. If this uh, video was entertaining, please like and subscribe and share it. And I guess that is it until the next video. I hope you guys take care of yourselves. I really do love you. Please take care of yourselves so we can meet up again in a week. And until the next video, ciao for now.